To another edition of Taking Over. I am Oled Ed Fries, and I'm joined by the one and only the natural Astro Bizarro and Astrid. We got a double dose of NXT tonight. Well, I thought we did. I felt like we did because God, <laughs> this show, I don't want to say it went on forever because that makes it sound like it was bad. But the show felt like there was so much. Like I was messaging you. At the end of the nine yeah. o'clock hour, I'm like, all right, cool. I was going to get up to go because I thought we were at the main event. And we still had an entire hour of stuff left. Like, wow. Yeah. And again, they crammed it all in without making it feel rushed, without making it feel like it didn't make sense. It was, it was dare I say, the perfect go home show. I think it's been the best one so far. To be honest, I, they've, I, not done, they've not done go home shows well mm. before. They did it tonight. <laughs> yeah, they got a horrible track record, but that, it got fixed tonight. I think at least a little bit, more than a little. We got our wonderful friend Bobby Munson in the chat saying, "Good evening, my friends. Good evening, Bobby. We're doing pretty well. Um, you know, we're a little hot, we're a little warm, we're a little hot on the collar. But you know what? It's NXT night. It's taking over night. We're here to have some fun." We got Barry Monkey saying, hello, everyone. Hello, Barry Monkey. Hello. Good morning to you, my friend. But let's go ahead and get started with, do we want to start with the stories of the night or do we want to start with the fun story of the night? I don't know. Which let's, <laughs> let's start with something fun. You know what? I'm going to break the tradition of how we normally do this show where we start at the beginning and we go through. I want to talk about Assistant Ava. <laughs> assistant Ava, the new assistant to the general manager of NXT, Shawn Michaels. Like, I think that this was done perfectly. 
She has nothing to do. They don't know what to do with her with the destruction of uh, the dyad. Schism. The schism. Dyad. Schism. The whole lot. Everything <laughs> gone. It's all gone. They're, they're kind of doing stuff with Joe Gacy, but they really don't have a plan for that either right now. Mm -hmm. And instead of letting Ava just sit there and just do nothing, they've decided we're going to put her front and center on our television screen and let her just be an assistant to the general manager. We don't need to have Shawn Michaels on TV making matches. We can just let Ava run back and forth and fill that role. And you know what? She's not bad at it. Like, we talked about this where you asked me the last week when we were watching the show, and she announced the last chance matches. And you're like, did I miss something where she got the power? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't understand how she did it. No, I have no idea. People are freaking out. They're like, how can she make matches? I'm like, she didn't say she was making the match. If you listen very closely to what she says, she says, I'm going to go get it made official. So at that point, she was assistant Ava. She was going to go talk to Sean, go talk mm -hmm. to Mr. HBK and get the match made. Later on, we see her going ahead and talking to Carmelo Hayes. And she says, it's as good as official. It's not official, but it's as good as official. So again, She's not saying that she can make the matches. She's just mm -hmm. saying that she has some level of comfort level with her. By the way, I do think it's funny that you're putting The Rock's daughter in a position <laughs> to work with Shawn Michaels. Where if you go back and you look at your history of this company, those are two men who did not do business together very well. Yeah. Hell freezes over, we know and then. I mean, let's put it this way. When The Rock got his hands on a brand new TV show chronicling the story of his life, Shawn Michaels got turned into a black man because The Rock didn't like Shawn Michaels. If you think I'm joking, search hmm. Young Rock HBK and you'll see what I mean. Because I believe it, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Darren Young who played Shawn Michaels. <coughs> I, I agree. With you. <laughs> I don't like criticizing people, so I won't say anything until you get to a new topic. I'm sorry. I thought it was, it's a nice thing to do for Ava to keep her on our TV screen. I don't think there's a, there's nothing wrong with utilizing talent in this way. We've done it for years in the past, look, Baron Corbin being the constable of Raw. He was never really in charge, but they just kind of let him be in charge. Now, granted, they blamed him when everything went to hell, which that's bad on WWE's part. But, like, I like the idea that she's kind of, sort of, got some power, but she's openly saying, like, I'll go get these things done. Mm -hmm. It's nice. She sounds like me Plus, at work. <laughs> It beats everybody knocking on Shawn Michaels' door every five seconds to get matches made. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would call him like an advocate. He's like an advocate right now. She's like, you need it? I'm going to get it done. If not, it won't get done. An advocate, you say? Like, yeah. like an advocate for a bloodline? I don't know. I cannot confirm or deny anything. <laughs> The other story of the night that the internet seems to want to go all crazy for, we'll bring it up now because I'm not going to want to talk about it later. <laughs> Last Legend. Oof. I saw the tweet where somebody compared Last Legend slamming Otis to Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. I saw that my dear friend Victor retweeted it. I want whatever y'all are smoking because, my God, if you think one is like the other... Even equal to the the tweet shows greater than and, and, and it's wrong because WrestleMania 3 is an iconic moment in history, and people will forget about this like they forgot about Bianca until Lash Legend did it tonight. Because this isn't the first time that a that a no, I seen pictures of both, which woman. I like though. I, I seen like, like Odie's getting lifted or something like that. It's both pictures. <laughs> 
Oh no! I, 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 like I said, I like the idea, and I'm all for them going ahead and utilizing women lifting Otis as a massive, mass. <laughs> Sadly, you're gonna have to hear her name a couple times. <laughs> but let's get into the show proper. I just wanted to get out there that she's not Hulk Hogan. That moment's not as good as WrestleMania three, and now we can it's move. It's better. On. <laughs> no, I think it just it's just funny thinking about it because we're used to um, talking about Lash in a certain way, like criticizing and obviously rightfully so in that type of way. But thinking about tonight when it happened, I love not only the reaction from the commentary is like, no, no, it's not gonna happen. She did it. She did it. To like when she slams it, the crowd, everybody starts standing up and cheering in such a way that I was like. What just happened? And then the holy shit chant, like right after, I was like, that timing of everything happened like so quickly. It was perfectly done. I loved it. Yeah, they made they made it a moment, which you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. However, I feel about Lash Legend, they made that that portion a moment. And wrestling's about moments, so congrats. Lash has a positive moment in her career. Bobby says a couple times. So does that does that so does that take Lash Legend to like platinum? No, no. She's still in the garbage can, but <laughs> might be sitting on the top of the garbage can as opposed to in the garbage can. But we'll get there. Last chance women's fatal four-way starts the show. Roxanne Perez comes out. All the rest come out. And this is fun. I enjoyed this. But Astrid, what do you think? This was my favorite match tonight, to be honest. I I wasn't sure how it was going to happen with the four girls having like kind of like their different style to them. But like I said, I've said this in the past about NXT. Whenever they do this triple threats and fatal four ways, I love that there's always something going on in the ring. There isn't one moment that there's like a gap or like a quiet moment or anything like that. And the pacing of this match is incredible. It was always two girls were always in the ring doing something. Something was happening in the ring, outside of the ring, everywhere. And it's like, it was incredible. And I legit, I have to go back and look at it just to like say it exactly how I said it to you. Uh, see, it was around. Uh, let's see. I said, no lie. This would have been good as the Aaron Survivor. Because to me, this match was already so good. I, I was thinking, how is Aaron Survivor going to compare to this match when we watch it on Saturday? Because I'm just like... This was really good. I really enjoyed it. The girls did incredible. Uh, I Yeah, I was like, I love how they had the bits and pieces of, we have Roxanne. I, Roxanne was the one that I saw out the most uh, during the match. But that spot between her and Kiana on the commentary table, the selling in there too. And even the, you know, the ending with Fallon and, and Thea too. It was like, I, it had that moment that I was like, sure, which one are they going to give it to? And then just having Fallon get that moment. I, I like how this year though, with the Aaron Survivor, we're getting the girls that we usually don't get a spotlight in most of the match, are, are, are in this match this time around. So it's nice to see that as well. So I'll get my audio later, but yeehaw, bitch, she did it. <laughs> yes, Fallon gets the win. I, I thought this was great, but again, you talk about Roxanne, you talk about Fallon, you talk about Thea. Let's talk about the star of this match. For the second time in as many matches as hers, Kiana James, the fucking star. She was great, too. sensation tonight. No, was everything perfect? No, they, they they had a wonky spot in the corner where she was running at Roxanne, and Roxanne tried to slip out, and Kiana didn't quite know the timing, and it, it looked a little funky. But you know what? Fine, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has has a you know, it's wrestling. Shit happens. Bad spots happen every now and then. There's a little clunky spot. Overall, her performance level from where she was last year at the Iron. Remember, she was trying to qualify for the Iron Survivor last year. To where she is this year is night and day. She is no longer Kiana James from accounting. She's no <laughs> longer just a joke that I make to, you know, reference Taryn from accounting. She is a legit, I don't want to say she's a star, but she's on her way. The women in this match, with the exception of Roxanne Perez, is, who's already great are getting so much better week in and week out. Fallon Henley, Thea Hale. And I've spent months, months railing on Thea Hale. She's getting better in the ring. She's looking more realistic in the ring. The matches are becoming better and better every week. 
this crop of talent in two years is going to be so ready for the main roster that there's not going to be enough room with the main roster girls that are already there and the girls that are going to be coming from NXT. There's going to start becoming logjam more than there already is. And yes, we're getting towards the end of the time when it comes to Charlotte and Bailey and Becky. Not because they can't do it or because they won't keep doing it, but because let's just be honest, there's not enough room and they're going to move to part-time status to continue doing other things with their lives, with the exception of Bailey, who's probably going to stay like a Shawn Michaels or like a Triple H forever in the, in the company, just keep doing and doing and doing. But Charlotte already has her, you know, her mindset towards other things. Her and Andrade were trying to get a TV show. We know we got Bianca and Montez having a TV show coming up in February. Um, we've got Becky Lynch, who has a daughter, who's probably going to want to start taking some time off and going ahead and spending some time with her. Her career was already going towards a mainstream portion. So you can imagine her career is going to start taking less time in the ring more time on off the out of the ring off television so you're going to have a couple spots opening up you're now going to have to not only contend with is it going to be tegan knox is it going to be natalia is it going to be you know zia lee uh piper niven um chelsea green all these wonderful younger talents because Bianca's not going anywhere. Rhea's not going anywhere. The rest of the girls in damage control aren't going anywhere, with maybe the exception of Asuka. Asuka may start winding it down. She's getting, again, not that they're getting old, but they've been in, they've been here a while. They're becoming veterans. They might not be doing as much in ring time. And you're going to start having Tiffany Stratton, Kiana James, Roxanne Perez, Blair Davenport, and more ready to go from from NXT to the main roster. And they're going to have to start making some decisions on what they do if they're going to only have two championships and a tag team title on that main roster. Oh, my God. You're getting into something that I had in mind, and I'll probably do this as like a little preview. Um, I Hello. Um, I was thinking of writing my, my piece or body sam All right, five things that I want to see happen in women's wrestling next year. And one of my thoughts was something sort of like a mid-card title because I pointed out I liked Becky's run on NXT Women's Champion because she was not only in NXT, but in the main roster as well. So it made me think of like some kind of title like that will be important for the girls that are probably not going to become, you know, a women's champion like like Rhea is right now, for example, or Io. So I thought about that as well. And I included that in my article thinking like that would be good to see because right now, and I mentioned this on Ladies Fashion Showcase with Mel as well. For me this year, I noticed with Becky, especially and with Bailey, they had that veteran mindset of I'm not going to be here forever. So let me help the girls shine that are here right now. Like they have to have the spotlight with me because this is the present and the future of the women's division. And I'm not going to be here who knows for how long at this point. And even they were asked about it in the press conference as well. And they were like, wait, 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 we're not going anywhere. But we know what you mean at the same time. I remember like Wilkins getting uh, getting uh, thrown about, about that one as well. But, you know, like you said, we have Becky has her, her rule and she's getting older. And not only that, but she has a book coming out in March as well. So it's probably going to start to win for that book as well to promote it. And who knows what Charlotte is going to get herself into a little bit later. But I always think of like, they're in that mindset of like, I'm a veteran. Let me start paving the way for the next crop of girls that are coming here because I'm not going to be here the whole time. And you've seen it like even later on, I'll say, I'll say a little bit now when we have Tiffany's hawking in that little summit for the Iron Survivor match. She says like she even said like I got endorsed by by Charlotte. Have any of you have? And I love how she pointed that out because it, it ties into what I'm saying now of like them kind of bringing it up and helping those girls to be like you're coming up next, so let me help you now and get get you ready for the next step and that uh, next part in the process. Yeah, um, you know, I I love that idea. I, I I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, this comment was in as I was talking about it, but Barry says it exists. And and by the way. Barry loves to go ahead and crap on some of these younger women. Like, <laughs> if, if there's bad wrestling, Barry's there to tell us about it. But even Barry says, I enjoyed this match. If this had been a year ago, I suspect it would have been a disaster. But they've improved so much. And I agree. 
I wholeheartedly agree with everything Barry said there. If this match had been 12 months ago, it would have been a train wreck. But Fallon's better. Kiana's better. These girls are improving. And it's night and day from where they were. And I, I still think, I still think they need one massive baby face and one massive heel who are old school veterans of the ring to be there week in and week out to go ahead and work with these girls to get them to that next level. But there's a lot of good things happening in this NXT women's division. And there's a reason why it is the best women's division in professional wrestling. That's not all women's wrestling. Like we, we take shimmer out of this equation. We take wow out of this equation. We take more, most importantly, stardom out of this equation. Yeah. Because you can't compete with an all women's wrestling promotion. You just can't. But these women get more time than any of the main roster shows give any of their women. And they constantly make sure to give more than one segment telling more than one story. Hell, we have a story that we'll talk about later with Chase U that has an underlining current with Thea Hale and JC Jane that's been being told for three months now that they've almost stopped telling, but they've been telling it the entire time. And you saw it again in this match with Thea coming out. And Thea was the one who started doing the hip swivel before JC tonight. <laughs> and by the yeah. way, don't think... I didn't notice that 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 Thea Hale's attire was covered in roses, Mandy roses. Just saying, it's not happening, but I'm saying, just in yeah. case it does happen, I'm gonna get one <laughs> one more check on my on my Nostradamus check here. You know, yeah. she was wearing roses. Just saying. We have Barry saying, "I'm happy to be honest. If it's crap, I'll say so. If it's good, I'll say so. I'm not." One those rose tinted glasses people because I like a wrestling. I agree. I like to be positive about wrestling. I like to try to find the good in what we're watching. But if something's not good, I'm going to tell you when it's not good. We we yeah. had shows where come on here and been like NXT do better. Yeah, Tonight's yeah. not one of those nights. Thankfully. Yeah. Um we then get Lyra backstage talking up Fallon Henley in the match that she just saw. In the Iron Survivor match, and she says that she's going to want to be there, you know, at deadline. And I'm like, well, yeah, you should. You're the champion. You should be showing up to the pay per views. <laughs> I don't care if you're on the card or not, Lyra. You should be at the pay per view. You're the champion. You're not Roman Reigns. You don't get to just stay home. We also forgot to mention while she was watching the uh, Iron Survivor last chance match, uh, we had Tatum watching her from the door. And then that, she notices somebody's watching her. Totally yeah, they didn't oh. even mention her. She looks over her shoulder and keeps looking back at the at the show in itself. I was like, when is this going to happen? The week after the pay-per-view, I'm guessing? Because it's not going to happen at Deadline. Also, I, I love... In my own little weird way, I was making horror movie references for Astrid throughout the entire show with Tim Paxley. Because she was three different horror, horror villains all in one tonight. Because the way she was looking through the door in the back... That's the ring. She looked like the girl from the ring. Yeah. Later on, we'll talk about what's next. And then the third, I'm going to actually pull, uh, I actually pulled up a photo to confirm. I know exactly what the ring attire is. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But before Lyra can continue talking too much, Lola Vice decides to show her, show her face and talk about how she has the contract. Lola, no, we want to forget you have the contract because Unlike the other people we talked about who are ready and making waves, you're not. And this promo showed it. Because for a girl who used to be in the UFC, who was supposed to be able to cut promos, she, she didn't uh, do so well tonight. My girl Lola did not do well tonight. And the fact that Electra had to try to bail her out by talking about the women's tag team championships should just show you how little faith they have that she's actually cashing in the breakout championship on Lyra Valkyria or any world champion at that matter. Did you get the same yeah. thing that I did with that? 
not only that, but I was thinking what I have mentioned before. I think the week after she lost, after the week after she lost when she won, she, I know she won the uh, the contract person the week after she lost, if I'm not mistaken. And I have mentioned it. I said, and this girl has to be going for the tag title because there's no way she's going for whoever's champion because I don't see her going and imagine making her look terrible after winning that contract. It's like, that doesn't look great. Like tonight, I'm glad at the same time that she got that victory because I felt like it was needed for her to get that boost after the contract. Because not only do we see her losing, but we barely see her on TV after winning. So it's like when tonight happened, I was like, she has to win this match, right? Right? <laughs> it was good timing. Yeah, no, uh, I, I had the same feeling when we found out there's because in comes the poor man's version, the wish.com version of Wednesday Adams. Um I I, I kind of consider the Adams family slash horror. Like it it's com it's a horror comedy, right? It's a horror comedy. Um, but no. Mm -hmm. Um Tatum Paxley comes in and challenges Lola to a match, and I'm like, oh, oh I don't know if I want to see that. And I sure as hell don't know if I want to see it tonight. I was like, that might have been a good match for the pre-show. So that I don't have to watch it. I don't have to cover it. But um, no, I mean, it, it's fine. I just, they're going to cash these in for the tag titles because NXT has no faith in Lola right now, right? Yeah, that was my mindset all along. I'm sorry, Lola. <laughs> uh, it just, it's, you know when... You know, when compared to like when Roxanne won it, we have faith that she was going to win it. We already had that. Not only the storyline, but like because of her character, we had a feeling that she was going to win it. And it's like, I feel bad that with Lola, I don't feel the same. Yeah, no, it's definitely that. We then have Wesley on crutches as he's headed to the ring. And when we come back from a commercial break, Wesley's coming to the ring. And this is the point where me and Ashley started questioning whether or not this is uh, a gimmick or not, if it's an angle or not. Because neither one of us remember any chatter at all about Wesley being hurt all week. I didn't hear word one of this until Wesley was on the show with Crutch. And I'm like, that's weird. I don't remember him getting hurt last week. Because normally you hear, oh, he's injured. He's going to be out for eight months to a year. Normally we hear about those things in some way, shape, or form before the show starts. But he comes out and he says that he was hoping that on this Saturday he was going to hear Alicia's wonderful voice saying, and new North American champion, because he knows that Dominic can't handle the heart of the West side. But unfortunately, he's going to need surgery. He's not going to be able to take the match on Saturday, and then he's going to have to go away for a bit, and that hopefully he'll be able to come back stronger than better than ever. We then have Dominic Mysterio come out, and I'm like, oh, here we go. It's an angle. Dominic's going to come out. He's going to beat him up, and then Wes is going to be like, aha, I'm not hurt after all, and just start beating him up with the crutch. <laughs> nope, that's not the case, because Dominic Mysterio says, well, I guess we're not having a wrestling match, so I have Saturday night off, and I'm like, oh. Oh, Wes is really hurt. And at that point, we want to go ahead and send our condolences to Wesley for your back injury. And we hope that you have a very speedy recovery. Apparently, as seen on Twitter, you're good, you have you might have even more time with your friend Mackenzie Mitchell, which, again, we want to send our condolences to Mackenzie Mitchell for being released this weekend. Because, my God, NXT can't have nice things. My heart's breaking <laughs> again. <laughs> oh... Mackenzie will, fought, will, will will land on her feet. Uh, Wesley, we miss you, Mackenzie. We miss you. At the same time, I also want to say I really enjoyed Kelly Kincaid tonight. But we'll I still miss her, though. <laughs> I, I I thoroughly miss Mackenzie Mitchell. I did love her tweet of, we go down together. If we go down, we go down together. That Mackenzie tweeted to Wesley tonight, which is just wonderful. But Dominic says, well, I got the night off. I'm going to go spend it with mommy. And, not, and he's like, no, 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 no. You have an opponent for Saturday. And he says, I'm going to let somebody who you know very well talk to you about it. I'm like, oh, shit. It's Rey Mysterio again. And it was. And we find out it's Dragon Lee that is going to be going ahead and taking on Dominic Mysterio, which means we're going to see Santos Escobar, which means here is where we're going to get 
Los Lotharios, the Garzas, helping out Santos Escobar. But you know what I thought it was interesting, though? I'm like, didn't Ray just had surgery for whatever? Was it his knee or his, something? His leg, whatever it whatever is. Whatever Santos did to him, right? Yeah. But I'm like, so how would you be? Are you going to be a ringside with a boot, I'm guessing? Yeah. Here's the funny thing. Hmm. When you have most leg surgeries, once you put on whatever you have to cover it up, you can pretty much do whatever the fuck you want as long as you don't put pressure on with wheelchairs, with crutches, like you can literally do pretty much anything. I mean, a friend of mine had hip surgery. Within weeks, he's out in the yard, putting up all the decorations, climbing up and down ladders. Like the, it's remarkable with leg injuries, the difference between a leg injury and a back injury or something else where, yeah, Ray Basir is probably going to be out there on a pair of crutches and be just fine. Yeah. Dom is right. What a terrible thing for a parent to do. <laughs> Dom is not right. Dom is not right. Dom is never right. He has the most punchable face in sports entertainment. Okay. Second most punchable face. You got me there. Oh, Daddy Magic. Yeah. I watched some stuff with Daddy Magic the other day on, on Twitter, and that man has a punchable face too. By the way, I missed 2.0. I really think they would have thrived in this NXT environment right now. I thought they'd be doing important things as opposed to losing to Orange Cassidy on Rampage. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> talk about NXT. <laughs> but then Wesley and Dragon Lee get into uh, sorry, Wesley and Dragon Lee. No. Dragon Lee and Dominic get into a fight. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do you think about this? What do you think about the change of pace? You're not getting left. I was, getting the only thing first, I, like you said, I was thinking, I was like, this has to be like him hitting him with the crotch. I'm supposed, to, I'm guessing this is what's supposed to happen because I, like you said, I didn't see anything about him being injured, him being out, or the match getting changed, canceled, whatever, nothing like that. So to see that, I was like, he, this has to be playing possum on Dom, right? That's what's going on. And then when he did, and he's like, oh, I have somebody like to give you the announcement. I thought, okay, Ray. So we raid on CNS when I went Dragon Lee automatically. That's all I could think of. And then I thought, I know this is probably not going to happen, but this is a good what if scenario for us Marvel fans. What if, right, Dragon Lee wins? Does he get stripped of the title because it's in the main roster? Because they did it to Paige. They did it to, was it Solo as well before? So uh, is it worth it to really put him in the match if he's going to end up winning and then getting stripped of it? So here's the thing. I think it made sense for Solo Sokoa to be a heel in the bloodline, so they had to make sure they didn't have the title because they they were putting him with the bloodline, and they can't have him lose. So he had to look strong. More importantly, they didn't want him going anywhere where Roman Reigns wasn't. So for their storyline, it makes sense. Because Dominic Mysterio has been on the main roster this whole time, and he's been the North American he's champion the only for one. the yeah. truck forever. Um. With that three-day window where Trick Williams was the North American champion, which I miss. Um, yeah, no. So we have a change for our match on Saturday. Speaking of Saturday, I do want to go ahead and make a mention to it while we have everybody here that we have a fun show coming up this Saturday and this Friday night. Jose on the air. Jose Gonzalez himself is going to be joining us for double duty this week. He's going to be here for the pre-show right after SmackDown, Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Translate that in whatever time it might be for you. That's For Bobby, that's probably something like 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Same thing with Mel. For people like Barry, it's probably going to be something like 3 a.m., so hopefully you'll stay up with us. Basically, right about the time this show started, it's going to be just before that is when this sh the, the show on Friday is going to start. And then whenever the show ends on Saturday, whenever deadline ends, we're going to go ahead and take a few minutes to get put together, and we're going to be here, and Jose is going to be here. Double duty for Mr. Jose. We are very excited to have that. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. We have Bobby saying, oh, yeah, Jose is back on screen. Jose is amazing. Everyone go subscribe. And, yes, go to Jose on the air. Go to his Twitter. He has his link tree right there. We can go yeah. – and, you know, subscribe to his stuff. Again, we're going to have all kinds of links for it over the weekend. But he has 
um, content with creators, I think it's called. Yeah, content with creation, and he has um, a new two, show. I know it's like, and, and my guest at this time. Yeah, there you go. I knew something I with guests too. Yeah, and I I about it. Shows. yeah, and he's a fine PM for me. We're only an hour difference there right you now. Go. And then Barry says, "Impact in NXT." I thought the about that. Yeah, yeah. Impact yeah. made the the silly decision to uh, run a show on the same night as an NXT show, so that's that, that's bad luck for them. Um, <laughs> because yes, their world champion is so good. He's in a tag team match on that big show on Saturday. So <laughs> I think I'm improving right that Alex Shelley is not a world champion. But anyways, back to the show we're supposed to be talking about. We're back at the trainer's room where Izzy, uh, Izzy Dame, or as I thought it was, Brooke Hogan. I, I swear to God, I thought it was Brooke Hogan. I was so confused what Brooke Hogan was doing on Raw. On NXT, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen her doing anything since Impact. At least I thought about Carmen Petrovich at first, and then I heard her voice, and I was like, oh, no, it's not her. Is another well, no, but the two. voice is what made me think Brooke Hogan because it's the same shrill, annoying voice. So I was like, Oh, it's just Izzy Dame. Oh my god, but, but I didn't know it was Izzy Dame until G uh Kiana told me it was Izzy. She's like, It's okay, Izzy. I'm like, Oh, Izzy Dame, okay, that's why I don't recognize you. Barry <laughs> right, says, Tommy Dreamer versus Diener on impact on Saturday. <laughs> I might be watching the next. Day. <laughs> Yeah, that, that feels like a real bad, bad show. Like, thankfully, they're finally going to put a title on Diener. Unfortunately, it's going to be the social media championship. So, yeah. Or worse, they're going to have Dreamer go over. With, again, we'll get into that later. That wouldn't surprise me. We then get a brawl when Kiana says that she's going to make sure that she uh, takes it to Roxanne the next time she sees her. Of course, Roxanne's in the same trainer's room, so... They try to get into a fight, but everybody stops them. And then, again, assistant Ava pops in and says, you know what? You guys want to fight? I'm going to go ahead and get this made official. And you know what? I'm I'm down with assistant Ava. She looks <laughs> great getting today. things done. Her, her, her red hair, you know, that, that little the little strips of red in her hair looks fantastic tonight. Great job, Ava. Um, But, yeah. Oh, boy. We then get... <laughs> Men's breakout announcement out of the clear blue, no warning, no nothing, just a yeah. video package for this for this match. So we have Riley Osborne, Keanu Carver, Tavion Heights, who I thought got released. So it was really funny when I saw he was in here because I swear he was one of the guys who was released at some point. Uh, Dion Lennox, our man Luca, Luca Caruso. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of my one of my three picks to win this tournament because we also have Miles Bourne, uh, the deaf wrestler who I'm very excited to see performing here. And Trey Bear, Randy Jr. Trey Bearhill, the uh, potentially most uh, problematic wrestler in the uh, the thing based on the gimmick they've given him. If if he has Native American heritage, he'll be fine. If he doesn't. Oh boy, NXT, you might have done bad. How do you have Eddie Thorpe, but then you have him on the other side? Now, now, mind you, Eddie Thorpe brings up the fact that he's Native American. But at least mm -hmm. he doesn't dress like the Tonka, like Trey Bearhill is going to do. And then, my favorite, my absolute favorite, I didn't even know he was still here. I thought he got mysteriously released. One of my favorite men in the world. Oba Femi is back. Yes. yes. <laughs> I want Oba to win this whole thing. He's not going to. He's going to lose most likely to Miles Bourne in the finals is what I'm guessing. Yep. But if Ilya wins this championship, if Ilya wins on Saturday, I wouldn't be surprised to see Oba Femi as a challenger. I wouldn't be surprised to put the men's breakout on Oba Femi and have him challenge Ilya and lose. Like, Sorry, he's gonna lose, but I still think it would be really fun to watch Ilya Dragunov try to throw Oba Femi around. Because it's gonna be a whole lot of fun to watch Oba Femi throw Dragunov around. But again, we might be getting too far ahead of ourselves. But Oba <laughs> Femi is back on television, people. Also, yay! One thing, 
not hide nor hair of Lexus King in the men's breakout tournament. That's true. What do you think of the tournament? What do you think of the people that were announced here? I like that. At least we know uh, some of them from like bits and pieces. Yeah. Because I don't like it when like what when they have most of the people that we don't know and don't even try to introduce them beforehand. So it's like that bothers me because I'm like, who am I supposed to cheer for? Who am I supposed to boo? Who's the face and who's the heel? I'm not gonna find out until the match happens. And we don't have backgrounds on them either. I prefer getting a background on them. Like I would have preferred like this tonight, and maybe some sort of profile next week on each one of them, and then the week after starting it, something like that. So I can be like, Oh, I'm gonna cheer for this one for sure. Um, I know at least. Luca, I know we've seen before in Miles, we've seen before in Oba. So I was like, that maybe feel good. I'm like, I want one of those three that I've seen already in a light to like be able to get towards the finals of this. So I'm like the other ones, I'm just, I just want to see what the characters are like. And I'm interested, like intrigued to what they're like, uh, especially Trey, because I, I don't know how I feel about that one yet. I just have to do some research. <laughs> as long as he's Native American. Now, mind you, just because you play a Native American character on TV doesn't mean you have to be. But they just have to be careful with how they do it. Like, yeah. they he didn't outright do anything bad tonight, but it showed signs of, oh, God, they're leaning into a Native American character, and that can be problematic. Not that, yeah. not that there's anything problematic about being Native American. It's having people who aren't Native American poorly mm -hmm. portraying Native Americans is problematic. Is, is probably more how I should probably word that. You get what That's I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the people know. Uh, we have Barry Monkey saying new wrestlers should wear tops saying heel, face, or dodgy stereotype. Oh, that's a perfect word for it. Trey, Trey Bear Hill may just be a dodgy stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, like I don't even have to know if they're heel ver or heel or face. I just want to know something about them. Like Luca in his mm -hmm. like 40 seconds. Like, told us, like, look, I'm a lawyer. And he's, like, getting, looking all dressed. I'm like, okay, you're a dickhead. I get to root against you. <laughs> Oba Femi yeah. is probably going to be a heel that everybody's going to cheer for. No. Yeah. We then get Lola versus Tatum. And the only important thing to mention in this, in, in this entire match is that Tatum Paxley, who was inspired to professional wrestling by the Scream Queen Daphne, was wearing almost an exact replica made for herself of Daphne's ring, ring attire. So much love to, to, to Tatum for that. We like Tatum, like I said. And again, like, just she's portraying all the horror movie tropes here, um, which which made, was a lot of fun. Um, engaged to Mr. Big Body Javi, who's getting a look on main event this week. So if you, if you get a chance, Main event, go ahead and check it out to see Big Body Javi on main event. That'll be a whole bunch of fun. Um, the match happened, it started, it ended, and uh, yeah. Do you have anything more to add? Like you, it was a match, the bell rang, the bell rang again, and it was over. <laughs> like, like, I, want, I want to say more about it, but there was nothing to it, and no, it wasn't good it wasn't bad like there's nothing to talk about like it wasn't a train wreck there were moments where tatum looked interesting and i i'm the problem is i'm more excited for the things that tatum's doing than i am for what lola's mm -hmm. doing and lola's got the money in the bank nxt briefcase thingy with the with the the breakout tournament yeah that's why i think it feels there because i'm if she wins it you want to keep her momentum going to the point that like, you make her look like a threat to Lyra. And right now we don't like, eh, eh, she, she's going to lose. Like, I, you I automatically think that way. I don't think Tatum's trying to go after Lyra. I think no. in her own weird, twisted way, she's trying to befriend Lyra. Yeah, because if you see I'm during the interview, she's she's touching Lyra's hair, but then when the match ends here with Lola, she's even touching her own hair in a similar kind of way. And that's the only thing that got my attention was the two black guys that were dancing behind Lola the, to her theme song. That definitely distracted me. And then we have Tatum in the corner brushing her the same way she was brushing Lyra. And if you notice, like their tonal hair looks pretty almost similar. So I feel like she it almost feels that type of way. But like you said, it just it, it also feels not wrong, but I don't have a word for it. But it just it shouldn't be this way to the point of like 
Lola's the one with the contract. Yeah, we're more intrigued by Tatum in the match and what Tatum's doing with her character than we are by Lola. When it should be the other way around. She's the, she should be the one getting the attention and getting that. I don't want to think like she's going to be win every single match because I don't believe that way either. But she should be getting that kind of momentum or like support that like that makes us feel like, oh, she's going to go against Lyra and, she, and Lyra's going to lose. And right now we don't feel that way. And that's what I think they failed in that in that part in that part of it. Yeah, like I'm fine with Lola not being the the, the, the all end all of professional wrestling right now, just because she essentially has her money in the bank. I'm just worried about the fact that whatever Tatum's doing is so much more vastly interesting to me. Again, mm -hmm. it may not be for everybody, but to me, she's vastly more interesting than what's going on. One in her matches and two, anything else that Lola's doing that is problematic for the person who has that money in the bank style thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Barry says it would be nice if before these matches there was a caption on the screen. If you want to go to the bathroom, now might be a good time. No, we're not getting game back into the the women's matches or bathroom breaks. Um, no, no, bad Barry. I agree with a lot of the things you said tonight. That I can't I can't agree with that because that was for a long time. That was what the women's matches were. And WWE's done a really good job, and NXT does a really good job. However, this match she might have been mm -hmm. right. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Speaking of bathrooms, segue. We got Axiom and Nathan in the bathroom talking about fighting each other and how Axiom thinks that Nathan got what he does. I still don't understand how everybody's like attacking Nathan and saying he got what he deserved. He didn't do anything wrong. If you presented me with Ilya Dragunov's life or Baron Corbin's life, I'm choosing Baron Corbin's life. <laughs> Like, he didn't even say that what Baron Corbin said was true. He just goes, look, if you look at the two lives, living alone and being the champion and being away from your family or having your family there and having money, big house, and apparently, as Ashton says, a hot Latino wife, then, like, <laughs> Baron's kind of got the good stuff going on, right? Plus, yeah. I get to, if I'm Baron Corbin, I get to make all kinds of meat. I get to feud with chef reactions. Like, it's a good life for Baron Corbin. But apparently, Nathan, thinking that anybody might possibly want to live Baron Corbin's life over the life of Ilya Dragunov, apparently is a vile, evil man. So everybody wants to fight him. I really didn't get this segment. <laughs> So I'm sure when it happens in the bathroom, I'm like, do I want to see this? Am I allowed to be watching this? <laughs> just, well, you know, at, least, at least it wasn't, who was it? It wasn't Ika Manjiro going after uh, Kushida while he was pissing. At the or time. FTR was, shaving their backs either, thankfully. Oh, well, I mean, that was kind of funny. But anyways. <laughs> we then get Baron outside in the most dangerous place in, the, in, in, in wrestling at all, the NXT parking lot with Kelly Kincaid. And she's asking about Ilya Dragunov in Deadline. He's like, look, I'm not scared of Ilya. I'm going to go meet him in the middle in the middle of the ring. If he wants to fight me, he can fight me. I've got the control here. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. And I'm like, ooh, Baron Corbin's being the smart heel. He's not running. He's not, he's not scared. He's like, look, I've pissed him off. Oh, boo-hoo. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to go to the ring, and I'm going to see him face to face. Like, I love that about the Baron Corbin character. He's just like, I'm going to do what I have to do. I'm pissing him off intentionally so I can get him off kilter. I like it. We get NSK Anonymous showing us that Tarmelo Hayes is sending a text right before Trick Williams walked out in the segment that we saw last week where he's all excited walking out of that room and then Lexus King follows him out and everybody's putting two and two, two and two together and equaling six here. Because everybody thinks they know exactly what's going on. I don't think they're right. I think he was just texting Kalani saying, hey, I'm getting ready for my match. I'll see you when we get done. No? No. <laughs> I, th I like, thought it was He's funny. guilty. He's guilty. <laughs> I See... I thought that until a segment we'll get to later. And we'll, we'll leave it there because there's a segment we get to later that I that I started to think that I've been wrong about this whole thing from the get-go. But we have Joe Gacy after this 
video package plays behind commentary and he pops his head up and starts yelling, Vic, we love you. Which we're right. We do love Vic. Like Vic's I'm like, not as good as he used to be, but we still love Vic over Booker. I was saying, does he sound like me when I met him? No, I'm kidding. I didn't say I love you. <laughs> but it's like, uh, I feel like he was looking too much at the fangirls and that's what it seemed like to me almost. It's like, I didn't say I love you, but I said, I like your work a lot and the schism, but still. <laughs> yeah. We then get Alpha Academy coming out. And after that, we get Metaphor entrance. And all right, here's what we're going to do. It. We're going to, oh, hold on. We got Barry Monkey saying, it would be better if conversations between wrestlers and neighboring toilet cubicles with occasionally straining noises, wind breaks. And It'd be funny. It, again, this is something I expect to see on Impact. Like, that would be something Impact would do. Okay. I mean, or Raw when Vince McMahon used to run it in, in the in the early 2000s. Because yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to I'm gonna steal a word from Mel. It sounds, it smells Vincey. It smells Vincey to me. <laughs> Remember, Vince McMahon pissed on Jonathan Coachman for for, for a laugh on Raw. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, Last Legend slammed Otis. <laughs> I, I got nothing. That was impressive as hell. Because it wasn't just like he he like jumped up into like into a slam position and she dropped him. She legit full body slammed his at like full rotation the whole nine, perfect body slam. Fantastic job! It is the best wrestling she's ever done. The problem was it was mixed into a match where Maxine outdid her in the wrestling department. With the exception of that slam, Maxine was a better wrestler tonight. Yeah. Scary. Oh, this is a good match overall. I thought this was fine. I enjoyed this. It was exactly what it needed to be. And in the end, Chad Gable puts the ankle lock on Noam Dar. Dar taps. And I have a feeling, I have a feeling we're going to get another North, uh, we're not going to end up, uh, another um, Heritage Cup. Heritage Cup match. Is it going to be Otis this time, or is it still going to be Chad Gable again? What do you think? Hmm. I mean, he did get the victory tonight. Wasn't it Gable that got the victory over the group tonight? So I was like, I feel like it's going to be Gable this time. I just think it's funny that everybody else in the group has taken on Noam Dar, with the exception of Otis. For the Heritage Cup. Like, Gable had, you know, Tozawa had match one. Gable had match two. But mm -hmm. it just makes sense that it would be Otis next. Yeah. This was fun. Uh, the match was all right. Um, I love the Alpha Academy, so anytime we can get them on my television screen, I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you! <laughs> we then we then get Mark, Mark Wrestling's favorite portion of the evening. We have Hank Tank in Gallus' pub! More Gallus for Gallus' number one fan, Mark Talks Wrestling. He's going to be so excited. Uh, but before we do that, we have Barry saying, you would think a match with regular breaks might suit Otis. I agree. I think Otis would do fantastic with the Heritage Cup rules. That he could take a couple minutes, breather every now and then. Like, I think that'd be perfect for Otis. I really do. Mm. Hank Tank wants to take on the best because... Uh, they're stupid, and they're showing it. So we're, this is just going to end with Gallus destroying them next week, right? Yeah, I, I feel I mean, bad, but I don't. <laughs> no, damn. Pink Tank went into Gallus's bar. They bought Gallus drinks to tell them they wanted a match with them, and Gallus said, "No, you're not worth my time." And then they started slandering them and something about the Glasgow Rangers. Whatever the fuck that is. Soccer, I Barry, think. Barry, help us a little bit here. At least if we're in Europe. <laughs> Soccer, I think. I don't know. It could be hockey. I don't fucking know. If no you context. know, I know even less. No context. But anyways, they're, they're apparently going to take on each other next week. So... Good luck, Hank Tank. I hope you get destroyed. 
We then have assistant Ava backstage telling us that she's just talked to Shawn Michaels. Roxanne versus Kiana is signed, sealed, and delivered for deadline. And only not only that, it is going to be inside of a solid steel cage. Ash, are you excited for this? Can you tell? I, I, I would be excited. <laughs> you seem to be very excited. Go ahead and go ahead and talk to <sighs> us about. Oh, hold on. Uh, video brought by Munson says, "Whoa, did you just put soccer and hockey as being the same thing? I am destroyed." <laughs> I take off for one moment, and this is the heartbreak I come back to. But I don't know what it is. I don't know what the Celtic Rangers or the Glasgow Rangers or whatever the fuck they were called. Okay. Barry Monkey says Celtic and Rangers, two biggest Scottish foot, foot, foot soccer ball teams. Okay. All right. So they probably were, were piping up the wrong team that Gallus doesn't like because that's what seemed – yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's what seemed to hurt Gallus into taking the match is them talking about one of those teams and whether they like them or don't like I don't fucking know. Of all the nights where we needed Mark Talks Wrestling to be on the show <laughs> talk about Gallus. I know it's obviously because I, I messaged him and Lauren, but I guess not. I guess let's see. <laughs> it's late. He's got a new job. He's not up late with us yeah. anymore. He typically yeah. watches on the YouTube site. Uh but he says he per, per, personally prefer, per, prefers Hearts. Hearts is a great game. I love playing Hearts on, uh, uh, you know, the card game. It's fantastic. We're not talking about card games. We're talking about wrestling and apparently <laughs> soccer. But, you know. We then get to the Women's Summit. And Astrid, I'm going to let you go ahead and talk about this because you had a lot of fun <laughs> with it. <laughs> uh, like I said, I was like, I was waiting for the brawl to happen when it started. <laughs> uh, no, this was fun to watch. I do like having each one of the girls come in and kind of give a little bit about them. I said it earlier, Tiffany started was like, I'm the best one and I'm the only one that's been here, a former champion. And I like her. She mentions her endorsement uh, from Charlotte there too. And I was like, basically nobody can compete with that part of it. And then Lash being like, no, I'm the athletic one. And then they jump into Kalani. I like how Kalani tells uh, Lash, she's like, the rookie can even take you to the cage. And then she's like, nah. And then this back and forth. And my favorite part, it's when Fallon just says her quote. And then she turns around and just goes, yeehaw, bitch. And just like chops the heck out of Tiffany and starts the brawl. Brilliant. I loved it. I'm waiting. I'm trying to see if I can get the audio because I love this so much. Yes. <laughs> I loved it, though. I guess you can tell. Yeah, this was a segment. Um, Kalani Jordan had a big thing in here where she talked about how none of the other people that have in here have been in the iron survivor so that apparently gives her an advantage i don't know why she talked about being a gymnast and how that gives her an advantage to which stephanie stratton gives a very valid thing of i was a gymnast too bitch mm -hmm. and to which <laughs> kalani goes yeah but we'll see i'm like tiffany stratton was on the fucking u.s national team like she wasn't an Olympian, but she was on the national team. Kalani, I don't know who the hell you are, so I know you weren't at least on the national team. So she has to be better than you at that. I like how they talked about how, you know, Tiffany Stratton was the most, like, you know, she had the most accomplishments. And I'm like, wasn't Blair Davenport the UK women's champion at some point? Like, I know worldwide she has way more championships than any of these mm -hmm. girls. Because of her time in stardom, because of her time in all of the independent promotions. Like, all of these other girls are WWE creations, essentially. Like, I know Fallon Henley's wrestled on the indies, but Lash mm -hmm. Legend is a WWE creation. Ke Kalani Jordan, I think, is a WWE creation. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so. Uh, the only yeah. difference is that we have obviously girls like Tiffany and you said, um, and Kalani who have a gymnast background and then Lash having her basketball background and that kind of athletic background. And then, like you said, Fallon had been in the industry before because she was in AW dark way before she was in NXT. And even us, uh, Tasha Price, I think it was their name when she started here. But I'm um, like, I like it. I'm like, if Blair were to talk about everything she's done, she would have a longer list than all these girls. And obviously she doesn't get to say it on TV. She'd have a longer yeah. list, come, but then all of them combined. Yeah. Yeah. If they and it's like, them. this would have been a good time for, for like her to bring it up. I know she can't, but this would have been a great way to be like, what are you talking about? I am this champion, this champion, this champion, this champion. I would have loved to see that that response to uh, from her, but obviously we can't. So 
She alluded to it without saying it. She talked about all the people she's taken out. With the exception of you, she didn't mention that she took you out. I think it was weird. Like she mentioned Why? Sol Ruka. She mentioned Sol Ruka. She mentioned Nikita. She did not, however, mention anything about Winnie Chu. I wonder if we're getting an, a character change, and maybe that's why they're trying to have us forget about it. Maybe. No, Blair did not get a good crowd reaction. Then again, she is basically the only heel in this match, with the exception of Last Legend, who got a bad, who, who by the way, would have gotten a bad crowd reaction had she not just slammed Otis five minutes before this segment happened. Like, yeah. if what she had just done hadn't happened, she would have gotten booed out of the building, too. So, like, yes, Blair did not get a good crowd reaction. That being said, she is the heel. Also, I find it funny. When they do the when they do the brawl for the women's, they did it smart because they have three heels and two baby faces. We'll see later on when they do the men's. <laughs> There's a problem when you do a men's feud and you have three baby faces and two heels in a match. Oh. What a mess. We then get Nathan versus Axiom. Sort of. Kind of. <laughs> it feels like as soon as it starts, the women come brawling back out to the ringside area. Yeah, I felt bad. But, but this is all a precursor to the greatest portion of the night. And we have a video for it. Yes, the lion roars again. I spent... At least 45 minutes making that this afternoon. I was Before wondering what graphic is he going to use? Before I even knew she was coming back. It was literally <laughs> just because she was on TV last week. And I was like, and Ashley was like, hey, you should make something with Nikita for when she comes back. And I'm like, all right, I'll just throw something together today because it's fun. Look, I but got yeah. the, the first draft at 5.13 p.m. So I can tell you it was done before the show started. And then <laughs> it happened and I went. Well, <laughs> I forgot what graphic you were using and you said it and I was like, which one is he talking about? <laughs> oh, and we also have this one, which makes sense during this All segment. All I have to say now is it's tippy time. But no, no, no. I was bringing up the fact that I made the wonderful yeah. new Nikita Lyons graphic. Yes, she's finally back. My woman is back. Nikita is back. I'm a happy man. <laughs> I'm going to be sad again when, when, when Blair beats her, aren't I? You can take care of her afterwards. I could. I could. She won't let me, but I can't. <laughs> Barry Monk says she came out, attacked someone, and they cut right away. Terrible. Direct. I agree. I really agree. I watched it back, and it's like, wh wh why did they leave? Like, that's a big moment mm -hmm. for them. Like, all mm -hmm. the other girls are doing is fighting. Like, there's no reason we have to watch them. And then the other thing they cut back to is Axiom and Nathan on the outside looking at Vic and Booker, like they have any fucking answers. Like, why do mm -hmm. professional wrestlers do this on a constant basis? Why do professional wrestlers look at the commentary team like they have any fucking answers to what's going on? They're supposed to play dumb, like the crowd. They're supposed to be as dumb as the audience is, so they can be our eyes and ears and say the things that we know. Oh. But Nikita's back, so just because. I'm going to play it one more time. Here we go. Yes. Let us know if you like the moving pictures or if you want it all as one static graphic because I technically made two versions of it. One where all the pictures just sort of stay there and one where the, the pictures move. So let us But know I wonder now, though, how do we get Nikita costing Blair this, this match and then we get no. her and Blair... And then we get afterwards her and Soul, and then Wendy's the main event. I don't get enough. No, Wendy's absolutely. No, but, <laughs> I mean, not the main event, but I mean the last one out of the like the victims to put it like that to like go after her. I was that's trying to look for a good graphic, but I don't find it. That's if Wendy's still here. Yeah, see. We then get a Chase U segment. And Astro, we'll let you talk about the Chase U segment here. I do love though how they try to imitate it like it's a news press conference with like the headlines at the bottom changing every time Andre says something different. Um, I do love the way he even talks about it. He's like, "Well, uh, there's a guilty person," and I like when he says that there's somebody like that basically did all, everything here, 
and they kind of start pointing the camera at the students. So like we kind of think like, oh, maybe it's gonna be a JC, maybe it's gonna be Thea. We we get the kind of idea that that's gonna happen, and it doesn't. And he's like, well, it was just me. I was just uh, gambling to the point that I used my personal finances, and when my money was done, I started using the ones from the school. So now there's no financial aid available uh, for the students were in ac ac academic probation. And then I like when Thea goes, but how much do you do you owe them? And he goes, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And like you hear like everybody as a crowd just reacting to it at the same time. And he's like, it's a loan plus interest. So it's a lot more than I think it is. And he just literally went after the university assets um, after using his personal stuff. And I like the back and forth like we had, like from like I said, from like the headline at the bottom to him, to the students. And even at the end, one of the students like, well, maybe we can kind of raise the funds for you, maybe a car wash or this. And then Duke is like, I'm not selling my trophy, though. That's the only thing I'm not doing. And we have um, Riley, who's the one that got announced for the breakout tournament next week. He starts talking about maybe you should give us a class on personal businesses and personal finances. And Thea is just mesmerized by the accent because I was too. How about you, Ed? Did you like the accent? I know you didn't. You're muted. <laughs> okay. No, oh, give me a second. I was trying to fix something on the back end. I can't keep, every time I keep doing it, you kept coming to me, and I'm not ready yet. It was fine. Um, I thought it was a good segment. Uh, I'm still. They still haven't mentioned the D'Angelo's. They said third party, this, that, the other thing. Like they need, just need to mention and the D'Angelo's. Anna was behind Chase, wasn't she? Because I know they point to her at one point, but I don't know where she was sitting at. It's not Anna. What's her new name? Uh. Forget it. I know Anna's her like, Rizzo. real name, I think. Rizzo. Right? Yeah. Rizzo something. Anyways, uh, you know, it was all right. It is what it is. We then get Trick Mello backstage talking about the, uh, the last chance match and what's going to happen here. Before they go to commercial break after Carmelo makes his entrance. And we come back to a Lexus King promo from Twitter in a tweet that Lexus King put out. And by the way, Again, I don't know why the internet hates him so much, but Lexus King, killer promo here. Love it. It was a really, really good job. And he talks about, people think I'm going to interrupt on, on Carmelo Hayes. Why would I do that? He's my friend. Like, we're not besties, but, like, we're we're buddies. And the hashtags are great. Mellow don't miss. Lexus King don't miss. Yeah. And you know what? Here's where my conspiracy theory comes in. Carmelo Hayes sent a text. To somebody. Don't know who. Probably Kalani. Mm -hmm. Lexus King sees Trick Williams walk by and goes backstage, but doesn't attack Trick. But he's going to keep pretending like he did because he wants to be the big guy on campus. He wants to be the guy who did the big thing. Even if he didn't do it, he wants people to think he did it because that makes him a more dangerous person if people think he's capable of all this danger. So it makes perfect sense that he'd be the kind of guy who'd be like, eh, I did it. It's fine. I don't think he did it. I don't think him and Melo have anything going on. More importantly, we'll definitely find that out. Later in the show, we're going to just put this in here right here. After the match, Melo goes ahead and talks to assistant Ava and gets a match with Lexus King for this Saturday night. And when Trick comes up to, to go after him, he's like, look, 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 I'm taking out Ale I'm taking out Lexus King this week for you. I'm going ahead and I'm putting business out there. And Trick says something that Melo really doesn't like here. And he goes, Carmelo starts the show. Trick closes the show. Oh, boy, Trick. I don't think you should have said that. Ay, ay, ay. That was a bad idea. We then get the men's last chance Iron Survivor qualifying match. This was fantastic. I loved this. This was great. All these guys just put on an absolute clinic. By the way, not only did they put on a clinic, they put on a clinic quickly. Like, they did everything they needed to do to make this feel like it was taking the time it needed to take. Or they did it in a way that didn't make it feel like it was rushed. And Eddie Thorpe got all kinds of shine in this match. With the spotlight with Joe Gay, uh, a show spotlight with Joe Coffey, with the stair spot, with him getting ahead and hitting everybody with the the planches like Seth Rollins, to going ahead and taking out Carmelo on the outside, 
he was he was doing great. He got a nice spotlight in this match, in a match that we all knew he wasn't going to win. There was no chance in hell this guy was making it to Iron Survivor. But in these two weeks, he's been put on another pedestal. So at least Mel will get to look at him a little bit more often because he's out there and he's doing good stuff on television. What did you think of this match? Yeah, I think I would say I feel like the gross match is better than this one, though. I feel like it didn't. It was good, but I feel like the girls caught my, more attention than the guys did. Um, I did like, like you said, those kind of spots, and then the part with like Eddie and the steel steps. I was like, holy crap! And just like that was like, kind of reminded me how I felt with Kiana and Roxanne in the commentary table earlier. And you know the brawl that we're getting at this point it was like the guys, you know, kind of I don't want to say frustrated, but like that back and forth with each other. Um, but I was at a point that I already kind of felt like, oh, Carmelo's not definitely not going to win this. So it has to be one of the other uh, three. And I had a feeling that Coffee was not going to win it. So I, I, I had that back and forth there. But I love seeing Tyler winning the. Yeah, Tyler wins. He starts to cut a promo. Out comes Dijak. And Dijak pulls his best Stone Cold Steve Austin here, where he's like, you're a delusional piece of garbage if you think you got any chance at the Iron Survivor. As much as this piece of garbage. By the way, hold on. He goes ahead and kicks Eddie Thorpe as he's being carried back by the by the the the, uh, the medical people. Mwah. Chef's kiss, Dijak. That was fantastic. He then gets in the ring. Everybody else starts coming out. They all start yip yapping at each other. A brawl starts. And and this, this is my favorite part. Trick Williams starts brawling with Dijak. Joe Joe um. Not Joe Coffey. Uh, what's his name? Braun Breaker starts brawling with um, blah, the other baby face in this match. Josh Briggs. That's the one. Yeah. Sorry, Josh Briggs isn't going to do nothing in this match either, by the way. Uh, anyways, <laughs> they start brawling. And Tyler is left there by himself, not sure who to attack or what to do. Um, yeah. That's why it's always better when you have more heels than baby faces. Heels can like both attack each other because it's weird when two baby faces attack one heel. It always just feels weird. But that was the end of that segment. We then get Baron Corbin and Ilya Dragunov in the ring. And all I have in my notes for this is three fire emojis because this was fantastic. <laughs> I I loved this segment. Ilya wants to, to wants to start, and Baron's like, "Look, you can, you, I'll, I'll start because we'll let the champ go for the last." Champ is like, "No, no, no, I want to go first. And Ilya has this great, you know, wonderful plea. And Corbin's like, "You know what, Ilya, you say all that, but you know what? You're mad at me, but you should be mad at yourself because you could have brought your family to the states. You didn't have to leave them behind. You're doing to your son what your." father did to you and i was like "Ooh, that's not nice Barry. that's not nice Barry." but it's such a dickhead thing to say that it's so great for Barry. he just keeps gnawing on that one little bone he has that one point and it starts irking dragon off more and more at one point he takes he throws the chair at one point he flips the table he starts taking off his jacket he takes off his tie. He's going to get ready to take off his shirt, and he tries to calm himself down. And he goes, Ilya goes, Baron, I have to calm myself down because if I take you out now, there'll be nothing left of you come Saturday. And Baron's like, you can do what you want. I ain't scared. You want to fight me now? Fight me now. You want to fight me then? Fight me then. I don't care. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to win the championship. And he just keeps gnawing and digging. Ilya. And Ilya gets so angry that he gets up and he's gonna you think he's gonna finally attack him. And he grabs him in this weird looking hug. So the Baron's hand with the microphone is right next to Ilya's mouth. And Ilya goes, The only person who can put the fire out of the dragon is the dragon. And he backs up and he just starts laughing at Baron Corbin. And for the first time in the entire feud. Baron shows the slightest hint of fear. Perfection. I loved it. I thought it was perfect. Because Baron is the smart heel. He knows he's getting at him. And all he wants to do 
wants to do is get him off his game. If Ilya is so mad that he can't see straight, Ilya will make a mistake. And Baron Corbin can get that mistake and take it. Because he knows he can go toe-to-toe with Ilya. But he need, he knows he needs Ilya to make that mistake to really win this championship. Whereas Ilya, he's just crazy. And he'll do whatever it takes to win. No matter what happens. I thought it was picture perfect. And Baron Corbin showing just that ounce of fear for a moment is all you need. Just fantastic. I know you're a big fan of Baron Corbin. Talk about what you thought here. <laughs> well, one second. The two different aspects. I love, like, the from the character's point of view, I love how at the beginning, I think it was after the girls' match, uh, you get Dragunov coming in, and he has a championship in hand, and he's walking into the venue. And he looks already upset. Like, he looks already pissed off. Like, that's the mindset that he comes in, like, focused and fired up on this. And then you get Baron Corbin, who's, like, kind of, like, cool, like, you know, I know what I'm doing. I got a plan and it's working and it's fine. And to see the polar opposites and then to see that kind of like change a bit in, during this segment is incredible to think about because you, you, you still get that continuation of Dragon of being fired up. He said like he's throwing like the, the table and the chair and everything. And then Corbin's like, I, I got this. Like I, I got a plan and it's still working as you can see. And then when Dragon of does a little hug and he talks to him the way he does and he says that, to see that change of like from being pissed off to like being focused and Baron Corbin being from like cool, calm and collected to being like, Oh shoot, what did I do? <laughs> it's just incredible to see that sort of change happen through the whole night for both of them, because we see it from the beginning of the show to now to the end of the show. And yeah, I just love this interaction. It was like incredible. And these two together, I, I know this is probably going to be like a one-time thing probably, but it's been so great seeing these two together. I love the back and forth they had with each other and how they found something about like the way that Corbin finds something. He just keeps going at it. It reminds me of my brother when I was younger. When he finds that one thing, that one weakness, that's the one he's going to go for. So the, yeah, just thinking about that, I was like, Baron is doing incredible here. It just I, I love what he's doing in NXT and just I want him to stay here a little bit longer because I'm loving this so much. Yeah. And again, before we go over the, the card for this weekend, I want to go ahead and play the calendar of all the things that you can see here at our local establishment for the rest of this week. You got me at the time. So, yeah, those are all the wonderful places that you can find us this week. And, again, I want to go ahead and say it before we start talking about everything else, that you can go ahead and find our preview show this Friday night right after SmackDown goes off the air with our good friend Jose on the air. Jose Gonzalez himself will be with us there, and you can find his Twitter right there. Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Go ahead and translate that for all of your local times and then saturday right after the show ends make sure to come back here and catch us as we go ahead and have another taking over the post show for nxt deadline it is gonna be a whole bunch of fun but what are we going to be talking about during that show well we've got axiom versus nathan frazier in the kickoff that's going to be a fun match to talk about in the opening match we're going to have it's not official yet but based on what trick williams says and what Assistant Ava has said, consider it official. We are going to probably have Carmelo Hayes versus Lexus King opening the show. We also have inside of a solid steel cage, Kiana James versus Roxanne Perez. Replacing, again, replacing Wes Lee with one Lee for another. Dragon Lee replaces Wes Lee to take on Dominic Mysterio. We have in apparently the main event, according to Trick Williams, the men's Iron Survivor match with Josh Briggs, Tyler Bate, Trick Williams, Donovan Dijak, and Braun Breaker. And of course, we also have the women's 
Women's Iron Survivor match with Tiffany Stratton, Lash Legend, Kalani Jordan, Blair Davenport, and Fallon Henley. And the of real course, main I, event. What I said to be the real main event of the show, <laughs> Baron Corbin taking on challenging Ilya Dragunov for the NXT Championship. It is definitely going to be an amazing show. But, Astrid, where can we find you for the rest of this week? I mean, you already mentioned <laughs> uh, But no, I, Friday after SmackDown, we'll be here with Jose doing that preview slash prediction show for Deadline. And then Saturday, right after Deadline, we'll get to react to it. Um, other than that, uh, you can find uh, my other stuff. It's I have it here. Uh, my uh, merch before you wear, which is this is the shirt design for those of you that haven't seen it. Thank you, Mel, for the idea. And for those of you that haven't checked it out yet, if you scan the QR code, I also have a link as well. If you shop at Debbie Shop with my QR code, I just get a percentage off of that, but your price doesn't change. Just a heads up on that. Um, I know we had Lady Susan Showcase uh, last Friday, so we're not going to have it this Friday, but we talked about the woman to watch out for, which we mentioned a few. I mentioned a few from NXT uh, during that show as well. But um, as you can find it there, uh, you have my Twitch, my YouTube. You can find everything else there, my Twitter and um Blue Sky, I keep thinking which one. <laughs> Astro Pizarro, and then Instagram and Threads, Astro Pizarro 20. Yeah. And of course, yes, Barry Monkey, Dominic versus Dragon Lee. One Lee for another, as Wesley is unable to compete. Dragon Lee will be challenging, and I think potentially winning the North American Championship from Dominic Mysterio. But we'll get to that on Friday when we start doing predictions and previews. However, you can go ahead and find me. On the Twitter at EdFries12584, you can find me on the Twitch at twitch.tv slash EdFries2002, where you can see a simulcast of all the wonderful content from our local establishment that I do. And you can also find me doing some of my gaming content, as I have a little bit more time on my hands right now as I sort some things out. But you can also catch me. No more Wrestle Draft for the moment. For the moment, there is no more Wrestle Draft. We'll see what happens with that. But you can find me, like Astrid said, like I said, this Friday, this Saturday. we got all kinds of good stuff going on. But make sure that you go ahead and check out all of the other wonderful shows here at our local establishment as well as we go. But for myself, for Ash Mazzaro, make sure you see us next week, and we will see you next time. And remember, 